Hi, this is Tim here, uh, G4WM. About a year ago I started work on an automatic tuned magnetic loop. Since then work has progressed on a little bit. Uh, originally on the design there was only one stepper motor tuning the vacuum variable right at the top there. You can see the vacuum variable at the top and the stepper motor beneath it. You can also see a bit of sticky brown tape on the shaft coupler. That's just so that when it rotates it's easier to see it on the actual video. Uh, problem was, it was difficult to get a good match across the entire tuning range from 3.5 to about 14.5 megahertz. The only way I found to solve that problem was to add a, a second stepper motor with a lead screw such that the input loop can now be motorized in and out as well. In fact, you can just see the input loop there and it's a, a stepper motor with the shaft coming out through here and then a little bit of tape on the end so you can see it working better on the actual video itself. Uh, that, in, that meant that the actual control unit had to be redesigned and to that end I made um, a printed circuit board you can see where the uh, microcontroller unit fits on there and then there's two stepper motor driver chips on there and it really reworked the firmware as well such that uh, we're now doing micro stepping of the stepper motors which means that I can do controlled acceleration deacceleration such that I can tune from the minimum frequency to the maximum frequency in about three or four seconds so we'll just do a quick uh, demonstration here atop we've got a, 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 a trio Kenwood TS 480 and we'll just set it down to the lowest frequency we want to work on 3.784 megahertz and at the moment the control box is turned off I'll power that up in, in just a second but as before we've got manual buttons for tuning the loop LF and HF but now so we've got these other two buttons here which actually allow us to motor the um, coupling loop in and out if we so desire so I'll just power this thing up now and you'll see it'll go for its automatic calibration routine and you'll hear some stepper motors whirling away in the background and I'll just see if I can get the stepper motor for the looping shot at the same time as the uh, controller there we go right power up and we'll see what happens now it's into calibration mode driving the steppers to the extremes and that's it calibrated now it knows where the uh, minimum and maximum settings are and it's all ready to go all I have to do now is press the button on the front panel here to put it into automatic mode like that and it says auto tune is now on and if you notice we've got the Kenwood Trio set to 3784 and I'll just key up the radio it's producing about 5 watts output and what will happen is uh, the control box will measure the frequency to within about 8 kilohertz accuracy that's all it needs to do it will drive the stepper motors to the appropriate points and then hunt around and eventually find the best uh, tuning point. So I'll just do it the first time with the camera right on the display and then I'll, I'll do it again with the camera looking at the loops in a moment. So here goes. Oh, there's uh, one or two debug messages which come up on the screen uh, just for information purposes, but you'll get the idea of how quickly it tunes. So here we go, transmit it's found the frequency, it's worked out what the target point should be 808 and 1405, it's moving the loop to 1405, it's moving the vacuum variable to, to 808 now it's doing a search, course 8 position, it's put the VVC on the loop at, at 760 and the, fine at, and, and the fine at 6 and it's achieved a, a VSWR of 1.11 and now it drops back into normal power meter though so that happened all uh, pretty quickly now let's just go to the extreme. Now that's the sort of lowest frequency we would normally operate on. Let's now put this radio on 20 meters. Um, let's put it in the middle of the band somewhere. It doesn't really matter where. Let's put it on about 240 like that. And we'll just put the camera down on the bottom screen here again. And we'll see the same thing happen again. It'll sort of measure the frequency, compute where to put the loop on the VVC fine-tune and then I'll also display what the offsets were just for kind of debug purposes so let's transmit now there we go 14232 8 kilohertz from what we measured those are the targets 
1883 12.304 it goes hunting See course 19 position and fine 8 and the loop at position 12.544 and achieved VSWR of 1.21 so that was how long it took to shift it from the bottom end of the band to the top end of the band uh, we'll just do that again we'll make it tune down to 80 meter band again and we'll, we'll just look at what the loop does. So I'll just change this band setting on the uh, Kenwood to 3.78 MHz and if you watch the loop now you'll see it um, adjust itself to where it needs to be for, for like best match. Transmitting, it's measured the frequency, displaying what it's going to do there goes the loop, be moved out to position moves the loop first, it does this at VVC and then it just tweaks the loop a little bit just to make sure it's got it right it's decided that it wants to be there and it's done and again we've achieved a VSWR of 1.11 thereabouts 1.1 alrighty so that's pretty good I'll just drop the carrier there and now we'll do the same thing again but we'll be looking at the vacuum variable at the top here which has got a bit of sticky tape around it so you can see the shaft rotating and if you listen very hard you'll actually hear the pitch of the stepper motor change as it does its uh, acceleration and deacceleration. so I won't talk, I'll, I'll just let it spin transmit now measured and the loop doing its thing done and again 1.2 so really fast tuning gets it to in about one or two kilohertz um, I could fine tune the algorithms to make it get a match of about 1.05 if needed be but it's consistently achieving below 1.3 across the entire tuning range so working quite well now and it's overcome the problem of the uh, mismatched loop when you change uh, bands across there like I say I've done this little printed circuit board for it and the whole design is going to be published by Radcom in Radcom Plus probably in the next two or three months if there's enough demand I may well get some of these circuit boards made up this is actually a Reve circuit board uh, there were a couple of minor flaws on it which have been fixed so the boards will actually be Rev B when they come out ready to go and as for the firmware customization very easy to do yourself if you've got access to PC and the tools but um, I may offer a service whereby I actually generate the firmware for a given set of data on the back of the board by the way and um, there's some surface mount components for the RF detection stuff in that corner not too hard not too hard to put down and again I may offer a service whereby the surface mount components are actually installed ready to go okay that's about it that's the update hope you found it interesting look out for the piece over in Radcom before too long bye for now